Uh, James Blake, hello. Hi. How you doing? Very good. Um, welcome to Made of Vale. Let's talk about James Blake at the very beginning. How and why did you first get into music? Uh, I just started playing piano. And my, my dad uh, was a you know plays guitar and sings, and he sort of passed some sort of musical instrument mm -hmm. onto me, and he, that started to be guitar at first. I didn't really get on with that. I started playing ukulele, and then at primary school I started playing piano, and then. Didn't really look back and just yeah. played that and then sang and sort of um i was Im mainly improvising and then got into producing fairly late fairly late actually about 19 right when i went to uni uh -huh. how old are you now 22. 22 okay so just a few years of that but always the piano what age did you start on that then uh on the piano yeah about must have been six must have been mm. like second year of primary school I think. wow Wow, and, and let's talk about 2010. Um, it's been kind of a year where a lot of people are getting excited about you talking about James Blake. How has it been for you? Yeah, it's been exciting yeah. and, and a lot of talking. Yeah, lots <laughs> of talking. <laughs> yeah. I think I've said James Blake more than any other, any other phrase. Yeah. I've, more I've, than hello. May, maybe I should change my name. I think it's been more than <laughs> yeah. one else. Like. I'm really tired of saying it. Um, <laughs> like, musically no, speaking, what do you think has been the most exciting part of the year then? Um, there's just been a few, there's been a few DJ sets that I've done that have been like movingly good, mm -hmm. you know, where the, the amount of people that have come to see certain, just to hear certain songs or even songs that haven't been released uh -huh. and, you know, they're all singing it or, you know, and you can just turn the volume down and they're still singing it. That, that's like, you don't really get that feeling anywhere else. So um, as much as I, I'm, I'm doing loads of live stuff at the moment and then there's been some highlights playing live and, um, but yeah, I, I reckon like the whole sound kind of comes from Obviously, how I grew up, but also sort of club music. So, mm. a lot of my favourite moments have actually been in clubs. Right. Um, which is weird because clubs are kind of the most instantly reset places, you know, because, you know, everything happens that night and then you wake up the next morning and everything's how it was before, yeah. you know. But um, no, there are some really good moments in places yeah. like that. We should talk about Limit to Your Love um, because that's obviously been a, quite a breakthrough track for you that's got everyone saying James Blake so much. How and why did you, did you choose that cover? Why did you love that record so much? Um, I just, because I mean, I play piano and sing all the time, so it's kind of like uh, quite natural for me to just pick up some certain songs and I had listened to that. I listened to Mushroom Boom by Feist and really liked it and then uh, I went and sort of searched out some of her other stuff and um, came across Limit to Your Love, really liked it, started singing it, recorded it mm -hmm. once, um, and then didn't really think about using the vocal for anything, but then I just sort of started using it in something I was doing, and then that turned into Limit to Your Love, so it's, it's you know, or my version of it. Yeah. Has she heard it? I don't know. No? Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I did no, send it probably. to her, I, we did send it to her, but okay. I, I don't. But she's not like phoned up and like... She's not been gushing. No. No, no. But I mean, that, that's, I, you know. Uh -huh. she, um, if she likes it, that's great. If she doesn't, then... Whatever, Feist. Well, I mean, I, I really like her stuff, so yeah. I mean, that's all I can say. Yeah, I mean. of course. Um, and then 2011, obviously, the album is, is all done now, is it? It is done, yeah. And, and uh, what are you looking forward to about the next year? Having that out, yeah. and just being, there's closure that comes with that. Um, and that's wrapped up now, so that's great. Um, getting on and writing more, playing live, mm -hmm. singing. Yeah. Mostly singing, I think. Yeah. Um, I did. I had a DJ set the other night, and uh, I, I played "Limits Your Love," and a couple of my mates were there, and they just forced the mic onto me, and I was just like reluctantly. I didn't actually sing anything really, uh -huh. but I sang like one line, and just like quickly, quickly put it back down <laughs> again. But um, it's obviously everyone wants to hear me sing, like when I play uh -huh. the, the vocal tracks out live. So it's um, it's really like touching. But also, like, it's a bit lame to be standing there singing in a DJ set. So. Maybe in a DJ booth, when it's a gig, yeah. completely fine. Yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah. exactly, that's right. So, um, I, you know, I can't wait to start getting out gigging and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, but that would be a thing that you'll be embarrassed about then? No, 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 no. Just singing in the booth? No, 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 it's just a bit like, you know, I'm not, I'm not MC. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit just, Kanye, isn't it? Yeah, singing in a DJ yeah booth. it's slightly weird, but, um, I don't know, yeah, I suppose you could probably put it off, but... Not when there's already a vocal on the track. Yeah, do you know what I mean? like, yeah, that's, that's a tricky a, thing. Put out an instrument. Yeah, have you got live dates set in then for next year? Um, yes, yes, we have. Um, we've got the uh, first show coming up in January, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Um, I can't actually remember the date of it, but that's at Plan B in Brixton. Right. Um, that's the first announced show, uh, and 
yeah, from there on, uh, there's, uh, there's a few dates and um, I can't remember quite where they are. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, bear in mind, I've got like a, I've already got a busy DJ schedule, so yeah. I'm like, these are all, these are all dates. Extra like, stuff, yeah. It's, it's almost, almost like I've got two schedules uh -huh. now. So I'm going to be busy. Yeah, get used to that. I yeah, yeah. Summer. And then yeah. festivals, is there any, any sort of live stuff planned for you for that? Um, yeah, I think there's um, I think there's festivals lined up. There's mm -hmm. some international ones. Right. I think we're playing in Amsterdam um, fairly soon. Um, but I really want to I really want to play in, in London and, and, you know, in the UK yeah. quite a lot first. I just want to, because I think, you know, because I DJ internationally, I DJ all, all around. So it's quite nice to just bring it all, bring the live stuff yeah, home. Yeah, back here, yeah. But um, that would that would be for a while, and and then we'll sort of yeah start touring. Yeah, and um, obviously a lot of hype around you at the moment. Is that a thing that's exciting? Do you feel pressure now, knowing that the album's due out, and a lot of people are excited about that album? Um, How do you feel? Yeah, I mean it feels really good. I, I'm I'm not sure if I feel pressure because a lot of my releases so far have been quite different, uh, and they vary from release to release. So hopefully people will treat this one with a bit of sort of um, open-mindedness like they have so far and I've been really lucky in that respect because um, a lot of my audience seem to just be incredibly open-minded so yeah I, I'm not, I don't feel, feel massive amounts of pressure I just I'm a bit nervous because obviously it's the first full length and you want to you know you want to see how it does mm -hmm. in the big wide world so yeah, yeah. Um, and this time last year what was James Blake doing? Um, I was sending tracks out to small dubstep labels and hoping that people would play it on radio and, mm -hmm. and, and I was quite lucky that they did. A um, guy called, uh, Dist a producer called Distance played one of my songs on, on, mm -hmm. on uh, Rinse FM and then a guy called uh, Untold, Jack Dunning, uh, picked that up and, and wanted to sign it and that was my first release. And So yeah, around this time actually it was kind of kicking off a bit in that sort of underground yeah. scene and like now it's um, obviously moved on a lot since then. So yeah, for for um, it's not. I wouldn't say it's gone up. I'd say it's sort of gone forward. Yeah. I kind of like to think that the way it's gone has been a prog natural progression. Like it's just yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Do you remember the time when you first heard your stuff on Radio One? Yes, I do. Um, the first time I was played on Radio One was by Marianne Hobbs, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm eternally grateful for she was so supportive and um she played um measurements which is a song that is going to be on this album right um and me and my mates all stayed up to listen to it um and it was a fairly underwhelming sounding record on the radio but uh <laughs> just quite a, quite an amazing feeling to have you know something i'd done literally like three days previous yeah hearing it on radio one was surreal to say the least but then yeah, it was amazing, yeah. Yeah, I can remember Marianne being really excited about you and like, because she did the show like two hours after me. So she'd always be in like Radio 1 basement hanging around and yeah. she'd like run through going, you're going to love this guy. <laughs> she was right. What about yeah, now that it's like all over daytime, hearing your stuff? Uh, Have you heard it in like in a cab? I've or? never heard it no? on, on daytime radio, no. No? Um, which is, I don't know, I don't listen to a lot of radio, I suppose. But right. I mean, I, I've, I've just, all this stuff has made me realise the importance of radio. Like I did, I, I didn't. I, I understood the importance of underground radio because that was just the sort of scene I was sort of moving in. Uh -huh. But I didn't realise quite how much radio sort of influenced the way people think about you and kind of how many more people now listen to my stuff. And um, you know, I've got people saying that their mum has heard "Limit to Your Love" and really liked it, and yeah. you know, and their dad likes it and puts it on in the car. It's like you know, that wouldn't have never happened. That would have never happened without you know people like Marion Hobbs. And uh -huh. so it's pretty. Yeah. It's, um, it's quite amazing. So talk to me about when you're, you're DJing mm. and you DJ silence. Oh, uh, this is a kind of a slight, I think it's been blown up slightly. I, basically, I, I, sometimes I quite like the, the, um, the sound of just not, nothing playing and sort of making people wait for things. Um, it can, if you do it at the wrong time, become quite an obnoxious thing to do, but then at the right time it can just be, you know, the the just the, the right amount of anticipation and mm. uh, so I mean I don't always do it I don't just DJ nothing yeah, you know, it's not it's not just for me it's thirty three uh, <laughs> being 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 played but it definitely is a sort of um, a device that yeah. you can use to your advantage sometimes just I mean like the other night there was just before something came in there was a tiny bit of a pause and I just stopped the record 
and waited about 10 seconds and obviously people were just waiting for this thing and then you just and you just play it because I'd play vinyl and then you just um, press play and it's and it all kicks off and that, that's that's quite an amazing feeling yeah. making people wait because there's a kind of a I think we're in a culture of everything's very fast and everything's very immediate and everything's very sort of um, spoon fed a lot of the time and I think it's quite nice to just stop that for yeah. a second and just go no you know you'll have it when I say you'll have yeah. it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's well, the breaks in Limits Your Love as well sort of has that same effect, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's quite startling hearing that in daytime radio as well, like sort of the breaks in it. The so is it, I mean, I'm sure there'll be yeah. a few people turning over at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's a useful, useful uh, thing to do, yeah. I think, yeah. James Blake, lovely to finally meet you. Good to meet you. You too, good luck in 2011. See you soon. Thanks very much. See you soon.